Hi everyone. The shortlists for the Costa Book Awards were announced recently and these were announced live on the radio and I uh, was listening to this on my way home from work on, on my commute and I got so excited about um, some of the books that were listed because a few of them I've read and really liked and I'm happy to see them getting more recognition. Um, some of the books I uh, have been wanting to read and um, been really curious about so this prize is a good motivator to, to get me to read them. And then other books um, I haven't really heard of um, before and uh, but sound really good and I'm really intrigued by now so I thought I would talk through the whole list because um, one of the good things about the Costa Book Awards is that it's divided into different categories and I'm somebody you know who mainly only reads fiction and uh, but when a book prize shines a light on these different books in different categories it naturally makes me more intrigued um, to read outside of you know my normal genre that I read in. Um, so I'm, I'm really curious to try some of these. So I'm going to go through each of the categories. There's four books in every category. Um, let me know if you've read any of these and let me know uh, what you think of them or uh, if you're curious to, to read any of these now. Uh, let me know in the comments below because I'll be curious uh, to know which ones um, I should try reading first that I haven't read before. So first off I'll start on familiar sort of ground uh, with the novel category and uh, so there these are the four books uh, listed for that and first off there's Middle England by Jonathan Coe. Now I've not read this um, but I've read Jonathan Coe before. Um, I love his novel What a Carve Up. Uh, I think in America it was called The Winshaw Legacy for some reason uh, but yeah that was a great book and uh, and I've been wanting to read this novel because um, it sounds really good. Um, it's about uh, a, different gen a few different characters across different generations in current modern day England and how within each of those generations they sort of feel like they don't fit or belong in with current English society so it's about clashes in, in modern England and I really thought this novel was going to be listed for the Booker Prize this year and I was surprised to not see it on this list so um so yeah I'm, I'm glad this was highlighted and uh, yeah I'm really excited to read this now. And uh, then a novel I was so excited to see on, on this list, and that is Starling Days by Rowan Hisio Buchanan. And uh, I thought this was such a moving novel. Um, so this is the author's second novel, and um, I loved her first novel too. And uh, But the, she has an interesting way of showing uh, dual sides of narratives, like two different characters, and she gives sort of equal weight to both of their stories. Um, uh, to show the sort of complexity of their relationships with each other. And so this novel, um, it's, it's about a couple um, who are um, who start off living in America and then move to Britain where the, uh, the, the male partner um, wants to manage one of his father's apartments. And, um, and it's, it's about a number of different issues, um, including mental health issues, um, about depression, um, but also about bisexuality and uh, about the, um, the emotional distance between a father and a son. And uh, yeah, I found it such a, a moving novel. And uh, so I'm so, so happy to see this, this highlighted. Uh, then there's a novel called Confession with Blue Horses by Sophie Hardash. And uh, I've, I've heard really great things about this novel from my friend Antonia. Um, so uh, my friend Antonia um, Honeywell, who's a writer, and each year um, she and I read the long list of the Women's Prize for Fiction. And we always duke it out because um, she's quite a criti cr critical critical reader. Um, she, she'll really pick books apart. And, you know, I'm like Mr. Positivity. I, I'll like I'll read a lot of the books on the Women's Prize long list and I'll be like, be like oh I thought they were great great I really enjoyed them all and she's like no nope, not this book not this book but but this novel um Confessions with Blue Horses um she's been raving about this novel all year and um and she was just um she she runs a, a radio station um book talk show and um and she was just talking about this today on her radio station about um how much she she loved this novel and is a big advocate for it so um so it's it takes place uh, in well, it sort of takes place in in London, um, but is looking back on the lives of a pair of siblings, a brother and a sister, who grow up in East Berlin, 
and um, and how they they don't remember a lot from that early life. And over the course of the novel, they gradually uncover what happened to them. And um, so it's that sort of exploration of the past. And, you know, I, I traveled to Berlin for the very first time last year, and uh, I've been so curious to read more about this city since then and the fall of the Berlin Wall. And um, so I've been reading more books um, about that period of history. And a lot of books have been written about that period of history, but there's a reason for that because it was such a fascinating period and such a crazy thing that there was this divided city um, between the East and the West like that. So, um, so yeah, I'm very um, excited to read this novel now. And then there is Shadow Play by Joseph O'Connor. And I've never read anything by Joseph O'Connor. I sort of thought that he might not be an author for me for some reason. I don't know. That's just like a very vague assumption I made, just sort of looking at basically the covers of his, his novels. Um, but this novel sounds really exciting, interesting, kind of gothic and twisted. Um, so it takes place um, back in the time, but uh, basically it's about the life of Bram Stoker um, when he was living in London as a theatre manager and about the, the lives of a few different people in, in his life at that time and about the formation of his uh, very famous novel of Dracula and uh, and how that came about. And uh, yeah, and so it's like a dark sort of twisted gothic tale, um, which I could really get into in the winter months. Um, so so those are the novel categories. And I should say that the um, the writer John Boyne is one of the judges um, for, for this category. So he was involved um, with picking these books. And, um, you know, I'm a big fan of his fiction. So I'm naturally inclined to trust his taste. Next is the first novel category. And uh, these are books that um, two of which I've been really keen to read. And two I hadn't heard of before. So I um, was excited to learn more about them. So the first is The Confessions of Franny Langton by Sarah Collins. And I, I've been so curious about this novel. So um, it takes place in the early 1800s in London, where a woman um, who came from the Caribbean, I think, um, is standing on trial for the murder of uh, the, her two employers. And, um, and so it's sort of a, a mystery story, but also I think has sort of gothic overtones to it. And um, I was listening to the author speak about this on um, the, the writer and journalist Damien Barr. He, he um, started a TV program recently called The Big Scottish Book Club. And uh, Sarah Collins was one of his guests on the, the very first show of the, the Big Scottish Book Club. And um, she was talking about this novel and they had a really interesting discussion about it. And it just sounds so good. So um, I'm really excited to dive into this over the winter months. Uh, then there is The Other Half of Augusta Hope by Joanna Glenn. And so this is about a, uh, a girl who is very precocious, who, who grew up into a very precocious woman. And, um, and she, so she was very intelligent and um, smart, but felt like she didn't really fit in with uh, the people around her. Now, this sounds to me a bit like the, the novel Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. I don't know if that's an apt comparison to make. Um, let me know if you've, you've read this, if you think that sounds right. Uh, then there is the novel Queenie by Candice Carty Williams. And I'm sure you don't need me to describe this novel because um, it's been talked about a lot this year and um, and the, the author has become something of a young superstar. Uh, so this is sort of being touted as as a, a sort of black Bridget, Bridget Jones diary um, because it's about a young black woman in modern day uh, Britain trying to find her place in society. I meant to be quite a funny novel um, but also have a serious side too and uh, I've been really eager uh, to, to read this. And then uh, there's a novel uh, which I'm really curious about. It sounds really odd. So it's um, Diary of a Somebody by Brian Bilston and it's a novel about a, a man who is an aspiring poet and he decides to set himself a task of writing a poem every day of the year. So it's following his diary throughout the year, um, commenting on his life, uh, but also um, sharing his poems. So, so on each day um, there includes a, a poem by him. And, um, and so uh, this, this is an author who's very popular on Twitter for his comic poetry. And I'm very curious to see how that that translates into novel form and um, and he's obviously following in this sort of great 
tradition of comic British literature because um, the, the title is a play upon the, the novel um, from the 1800s, I think, um, called Diary of a Nobody. Then there is the poetry category, which I am so, so excited about um, because there are two of these books I've been really wanting to get to and one which I absolutely loved and uh, one that I hadn't heard of before. Um, so various, very curious to read now. Uh, so the first is Reckless Paper Birds by John McCullough. And I've not read this collection, but I read his debut collection called The Frost Fairs, which I absolutely loved. And I followed this author on social media ever since. And he just has a sort of absurdist way of looking at the world, um, which is very humorous and funny. He, he just tickles me. Um, and uh, and this, this collection is blurbed by Richard Scott, um, who was shortlisted for the poetry category in the Costa Book Awards last year um, for his wonderful collection, Soho, which I absolutely loved. And, uh, and this collection, um, I love looking through it because uh, a lot of the titles of the poems are very funny and just draw you in and make you want to read them. So like there's one poem called Notes for a Cheery Post-Apocalyptic Short and uh, one called Please Don't Touch Me, My Head Falls Off. <laughs> and, uh, and there's a poem called your kindness has snapped me like an old deck chair. Um, so yeah, I'm so excited uh, to get to this and very excited to see this on the list. Uh, then there is Surge by J. Bernard, um, which is absolutely one of my favorite books of the year that I've read so far. It's so powerful. Um, so J. Uh, did research into the uh, new crossfires in the early 1980s in London, um, which was a, a fire in South London, um, which killed a number of uh, young black uh, British youth. And, um, and the circumstances of this fire were very suspicious and the, the police work that um, investigated it um, was very shoddy and mishandled. And there were a lot of protests that followed um, because of this. And it pointed to a lot of racial tension in modern day Britain. And so the, the author um, explores the history of this um, by invoking the voices of uh, some of the victims and the, the protesters um, surrounding this is incident and brings it into to to the modern day and instances of social injustice today. Um, so I so, so, so recommend this book. Um, it's really brilliant. Um, then there is Flesh by Mary Jean Chan, um, which I keep hearing really great things about and I've been wanting to read. So Jen Campbell made a whole video um, about this collection and the title is a sort of play upon the, the word, which is the French word um, for arrow and means a uh, offensive mood in uh, fencing, um, so it's it's a sort of stance of combat. But then, obviously, the the sound flesh in English um, means uh, uh, flesh and sort of vulnerable and soft flesh of of our bodies. And so it's a sort of play on that duality and state of being, um, while also looking at queer lit queerness and multilingualism. And uh, so yeah, <laughs> it uh, it uh, it sounds so good. I'm very eager to to read this. Then there is the collection The Mizzy by Paul Farley, um, which has a really beautiful cover, and I hadn't heard of this before, um, but it's a collection which explores uh, the, the sort of in-between stages between uh, different transitions in society, so like from analog to the digital age, and also from the, the natural worlds to um, urban life. So I'm very intrigued to explore this as well. And here are the four books in the biography category. Um, the, the first one um, I was very excited to see uh, is uh, In Extremis by Lindsay Hilsom, which is looking at the life of uh, Marie Colvin. And uh, I don't know if anybody else um, saw that film, which came out earlier this year called A Private War, which was about Marie Colvin's uh, life um, played by Rosamund Pike um, and really powerful movie. Um, so, so she was a photojournalist who went to some of the most extreme war zones in the world um, to photograph them and report on them. And she interviewed figures like Colonel Gaddafi and Yasser Arafat. Uh, and she, she kept um, traveling to these um, very extreme locations and, uh, but, and was obviously driven um, by this slightly self-destructive um, side, but was also driven by a powerful need to uh, testify and pay witness to the experiences, these experiences happening in the world that a lot of people 
people wanted to turn their backs on. Um, so uh, that that film made me really curious to know more about her life. So um, so yeah, I'm very interested to read this biography now. Um, then there is a book called On Chapel Sands by Laura Cumming, and so this explores the um, the story of the um, the author's mother's life um, when the mother was a girl living on a seaside coastal town in England. Um, when she was five years old, she was uh, kidnapped and disappeared for five days um, and then reappeared, um, but she didn't remember anything from this period of time, and it was all sort of hushed up and a lot of secrecy around it. And so she she takes that as a starting point, exploring the history of that, as well as other like mysteries in this um, British seaside town. Um, so that sounds really intriguing. Um, then there's a book um, with a really beautiful cover called The Making of Poetry uh, by Adam Nicholson. And uh, so look at how gorgeous uh, this cover is. And then it's um, continued on on the inside um, with this this painting. So this is looking at the lives of, um, of a number of different poets in a single year in British history of uh, Coleridge and Wordsworth. And, um, and how they were sort of all working around each other in this time in the 1700s, the late 1700s. And in this uh, year, a number of seminal works of British poetry were written and went on to really influence English poetry in the, the years to come. So he's looking at the events of that year and that time period and that social group of um, how these people came together and what inspired these great works of poetry. And um, then there is a very intriguing sounding book called The Volunteer by Jack Fairweather. And it's recounting an incredible story of life of a man, a Polish man named uh, Witteld Pilecki, uh, who in 1940 uh, volunteered to enter the uh, concentration camp of Auschwitz to investigate the crimes of the, the Nazis taking place there and also try to stir up a secret army to revolt against them from within the, the inside. And um, so he was sort of gathering this evidence to take to the outside world and then it was is about the the difficulty and the challenge of then trying to escape from this this notorious concentration camp so it's an incredible story that i'm so curious about and then finally there is the children's category and now i barely ever read any children's literature um but i'm actually really happy to have this at this time of year um because over the the christmas period um i i have two uh, nephews who are adolescents and who um are getting to be really big bookworms and and reading a lot and so I'm, I'm so excited to try reading some young adult novels which then I can pass on to them which hopefully they'll read as well and then we can have a little book club together a sort of family book club and I think that would be really great um, so the first book um, is called In the Shadow of Heroes and it's looking at ancient Rome um, two adolescent slaves in ancient Rome who go on a quest to try to um, steal the, the golden fleece. So that sounds like a really fun adventure story. And then there is Asha and the Spirit Bird uh, by Jasbinder Bilan. And this is about a girl who's growing up um, at the, the base of the Himalayas and her, her father has to, to work far away from, from their hometown um, and send money back to her. But then he disappears and, and, uh, and stops writing her. And so she goes on um, a, a quest to try to find him alongside her friend. Uh, then there is Crossfire by Mallory Blackman. And so this is the fifth book, I think, in um, a series, uh, a dystopian series um, that Ma Mallory Blackman has created um, called the Knots and Crosses series, um, which is sort of alternative history that looks what would happen if the African nations had developed uh, technologies and opportunities to take control of European countries and enslave uh, European people instead of the other way around. And how would that play out? And, um, and gradually over the 
the course of this series. Um, I think there there's uh, sort of uh, slavery had been outlawed and um, and then there's sort of a gradual uh, building towards equality. And so it's a different way of looking at this history um, through this dystopian lens. And and naturally, um, it's it's commenting a lot on current politics of our time. So um, she was inspired to write this, taking into account uh, Brexit and also uh, the recent American presidency. Um, so she's playing upon a lot of these current issues um, in this, this new installment of the series. And then there is a novel called Furious Thing by Jenny Downham. And this is about a adolescent girl who finds herself frequently driven to, to rage and raging against um, the people that she's closest to in her life, um, which is alienating her from them, um, which is actually the complete opposite of what she wants to happen. So it sounds like a really moving story about um, the issues to do with anger management. So those are all the books on the shortlist and a lot of them I'm really curious to, to give a try. Um, but like I said, let me know in the comments which ones you're most curious about or if you've read any of these, what you think of them and who you'll be rooting to win. So I think the announcements um, that will occur of each category winner will be announced at the beginning of January, I think on the 6th of January. And then I believe on the 28th of January, an overall winner is going to be announced where each of the category winners are put against each other and then one overall category winner wins. But I'm really glad that there's a great book award that occurs over the winter months like this, a sort of like bridge between one year and another because like over the holiday period I find it's a good time to settle down and read some books that I've been meaning to get to. So I'm glad this prize is highlighting that. Uh, so let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll chat to you again soon. Bye everyone.